Hi everyone, I'm going to make today some uh, greeting cards with envelopes from 12 by 12 uh, scrapbook paper, uh, easiest that you'll ever probably make. A friend needs me to make her some, so I picked 10, uh, 10 12 by 12 uh, scrapbook paper, as you can see. Mostly in the same uh, range of colors. I don't uh, quite care about what exactly is on each uh, page, each paper. And I've picked uh, one stencil that would be my main uh, design to go on all these papers. And and I'm thinking that on a paper that is like this, that is mostly a background, I will add this mandala stencil all, all over it. And on pages like this, maybe I will uh, stencil off to the side. And each page I will just add something differently, a little bit different. Now, I'm going to use my uh, Distress Inks Tim Holtz just because it needs to be quick and I am not I don't want to wait for paint to dry but you can stencil with just acrylic paint and makeup sponge so I'm going to start with this one I'm going to do like two on uh, so you can see and then I will continue stenciling off camera and then I will show you how to assemble the greeting card with an envelope and it's really really easy so i'm thinking of going with all kinds of green and blues on maybe even add here mostly it's just green in the back so maybe i will insert a little bit of a brown because the other pages have a, a brown in them kind of vintagey brown and we'll see so I'm just going to start I've got this makeup brushes and I'm just going to pick a color this one is cheap sapphire I'm going to put some um, not I'm going to use more than one color on each page and I'm not looking for a fine stenciling. I just interested in more of a distressed look. I don't know how to explain it. If I have used acrylic paint, uh, instead of using a makeup sponge like this, I would probably have used this kind of sponge uh, and make it look more distressed so <laughs> that's the best explanation I can give for what I'm uh, trying to achieve here and of course I can always uh, hold it down in one place and lift it up just to see how it looks and of course I moved <laughs> so uh, this was nice now I'm I want to change color let's try this pine needles of course if you don't have this and you have uh, this taubers or i don't know what to call them then use this I'm a little bit overlapping between the green and the blue that I've used before just so it would look a little bit more blended but otherwise it really doesn't matter I'm just spreading it quite randomly there is no planning going into this I can decide that I need to put more oopsie more of the blue here and just continue so as I said quite random and now I want to 
put a little bit of brown as I said so it will correspond with the other papers I'm going to probably do some mix and match in between the papers that I've picked so I want to have something that would be make them all cohesive so sometimes it's with patterns sometimes it's by using same colors so the pattern is given by using the same stencil over again and colors as i said i just picked what i had that will go with the rest so let's see oh i love it okay so one is done i can take another page let's see here i'm going uh, to put the mandala a little bit here i've got a lot of interest in this side so i don't need uh, to add to it and if i uh, forgot this is vintage photo so let's see going again and using the blue Of course I can also uh, add other colors that will be <clears throat> like I can decide to take stormy skies and add I'm just a uh, keeping with how do I explain it with the same family of colors <laughs> Now you can also decide not to only stencil, you can take a stamp or a, a set of stamps and just go and that will on all the pages and that what will create the, the repeating pattern. I'm not using, I don't think I'm going to use the brown here because I've already got the brown of the paper in the back, so I don't need to use the brown distress ink. So quite quickly and here it is. And as I said, if I feel it needs something more, I can always take another element and use it on the page. I'm looking here. I've got this uh, stamp that looks a little bit like a small mandala. I can take this and add again. I'm doing it very gently. I don't want it to be too prominent on the page that's it now each 12 by 12 is going to be cut and used as a greeting card and an envelope so it won't stay in this a uh, like it is right now okay so i've got eight more to do the same way I've, I've showed you this, the two papers. So I'm going to continue doing this and then I'll be back. Okay, so finished doing the 10 pages and now I'm going to just align them and we are going to cut. So this is all a, aligned. I'm just going to flip it over. So I can see what I'm doing and I'm taking a ruler and I'm going to mark, let's see, I'm going to mark here at seven inches and up here at seven inches 
we've got a 12 inch so you will have and just uh, make sure uh, sometimes uh, the stacks are not exactly uh, 12 inches but it will uh, it's okay like here I have a little bit less than 12 inches I don't care I'm still marking at the 7 inch point and if you want centimeters it's approximately 18 centimeters and I'm going to just cut all the pages at the same time just so it would be easier I'm going to put it here making sure everything is aligned taking the ruler And now I'm just going to cut. Oopsie. Okay. I'm still in place. The small a uh, part is going to be the greeting card the larger one is going to be the envelope you can when you're doing it you can decide if you want it uh, the envelope a little bit smaller or uh, or bigger you can play with the measurement a little bit not a lot and I'm always recommending of doing a template if you are not sure. Okay, so in terms of this are going to be the greeting cards. So let's put this aside for now. The greeting cards, the only thing that I'm going to do is just flip it like this and just fold it in half and that's the greeting card of course you can decide which uh, which side will be a uh, front and which is going to be the back side now i like to go and round the corners you don't have to if you have something like this a punch that uh, does the corners that's great if you don't and you still want to round your corners get an a round object the size you want mark it and then cut it like let's see let's take a piece of paper I've got this and let's some, find something a little smaller just to demonstrate I'm taking this cap I'm going into the corner I hope you can see what I'm doing I'm marking it and then I can take scissors I always recommend nail scissors they have a curve it's easier to cut curvy things and of course you can then erase the pencil mark so very easy even if you don't have this kind of thing so that's going to be my a uh, greeting card and of course i can still go and decorate it and add all kinds of stuff right now i'm keeping it here let's do uh, all the others and if like me you made a, there is a little bit difference in the length of the greeting card like here it's a little bit longer I can always go in with the ruler and just trim the access if I just made it crooked so here we go and of course just rounding the corners very easy just holding in half and rounding the corners 
decorating more is <laughs> the next stage if you want it of course if you have some very very beautiful uh, 12 by 12 papers that uh, you don't want to mess with then just leave it as is and that's it I like to do the whole a uh, thing to just do it so if I want to mix and match and not take the same paper for the greeting card and the envelope so I can play with the matching of the two oh, I didn't crown this corners Okay, something doesn't work here. Here we go. Okay, next, like an assembly line. Very, very easy. Now, of course, if you don't have 12 by 12, you can make it from any other painty paper, collage paper that you have and you think would be a good for in terms of weight of the paper or the thickness of the paper to uh, use as greeting cards and envelopes. I just want to use all my 12 by 12 that I have and rarely get to do something with I'm as I said in my other videos I'm planning on using all the 12 by 12 I have not all of them but most of them I'm planning on making a journal out of them so that would be the next uh, <laughs> thing to use all my uh, scrapbook paper okay so this is going to be the envelope let's take one and let's see basically uh, that's my uh, greeting card and it's going to be nestled like this so now you just have to see uh, how do you like it you like a big flap a small flap you want it in the middle you can, as long as this has a little bit of overlapping, then you have an envelope. So here you can just uh, play with the measurements. Let's see. Let's take, I'm going to mark it. I think I'll take, let's see, four inches. Yeah. I'm going to mark here four inches and let's just fold it I'm just placing my finger here if you want to do something more elaborate go for it like this and just so I uh, to make sure here is my greeting card and now I need to decide how I want my flip. I can do it exactly to where my greeting card is ending or I can give it a little bit of room. I'm just going to do it like this. This is not measured. I'm just aligning it and here is my envelope. Once again, now I haven't uh, glued it yet because I am going to once again round all my corners which is optional if you like it do it don't like it don't do it now I thought about inking around the edges of um, the envelope and the greeting card decided that I want to 
a leave my great uh, envelope as is i'm only going to ink around the edges of the greeting card so envelope is basically done we only need to uh, put some kind of ad adhesive here and here and this is really up to you what you like to use uh, if you have score tape go for that double-sided tape of any kind can be used here i'm using the this b7000 or e6000 uh, basically it's a very very strong uh, glue the only reason that i'm using it here because it has a fine nozzle and it's easier to use otherwise i can use any other glue so here it is i'm just going over with a bone folder on my fold don't have a bone folder just use the back of your uh, scissors like this just make sure you don't have any paint on on them because then it will <laughs> stain your paper so one envelope is done in terms of closure i like to use i've got this a uh, velcro dots from the cheap store so that's one option uh, you don't have to uh, do any kind of closure but again up to you and another way to go about it i don't know what it's called but there are magnets that are very very flat usually we get uh, let's see if i have it here to uh, show you uh, all kinds of uh, uh, stuff gets uh, with like this this is a magnet so um, and we get all kinds of um, what do you call them <laughs> like an installator or a, an electrician they put uh, this kind of magnets on our doors so <laughs> i'm always keeping the that stuff and if i want it to be a magnet then i just cut a small a piece and glue it uh, to my envelope but right now i'm with this i'm going to use the velcro dots and depending on the glue if it's a if it has a a strong glue i'll leave it as is if it doesn't i will reinforce it with the same glue that i've used for the sides of the envelope so what i like to do is match the two sides of the velcro decide where i want it here on the flap i hope i'm in frame like this and now i'm just squishing it and as you can see i've done something wrong here <laughs> i'm just what can i say i've made a mess let's take another velcro dot don't know how i managed to do it but never mind okay so velcro dot okay now it's supposed to be okay and it has a very hard adhesive very strong squish it and here it is one envelope done and afterwards i can decide what i want to mix and match with each envelope and what side do i want it on so let's see I'm going to continue doing the all the envelopes the same way I uh, showed you just flipping it over marking it four inches folding
and let's see let's I'm making a mess like always <laughs> okay I'm just going to use this as a guide so all the envelopes will be the same let's see maybe it will be just easier here it's two and I don't know we I use centimeters so it's a little bit difficult uh, the inches two one two three four five six a two a, a two and eight whatever almost seven centimeters so now i'm going to do all the envelopes and when i'm finished folding the envelopes and doing all the corners i'll be back okay so i've got all the envelopes here and i've got my greeting cards i've already inked around the edges of this ones i'm just going to do this too so you can see what i'm doing i'm taking the same distress ink i've used before the vintage photo and with a makeup sponge i'm just going over the edges like this now you can decide to go very subtle or you can go in a little bit more depends on how you want it to look i'm doing it very quickly now of course decorating if you want to decorate more uh, if it's the greeting card or the envelopes uh, options are endless and it depends of what you have if you want to put words uh, bows uh, stickers whatever you want you can add or you can just leave it as is okay so what i uh, figured i looked at it and i wanted to add a little bit more uh, to each greeting card and i picked this um, stamp of a butterfly and i have here memento tuxedo black and i'm debating if i want it center stage or just a hint of it i'm not sure maybe each one i'll do whatever comes <laughs> natural <laughs> what i think it is needed like here i don't want it center i want it a little bit to the side so that's what i'm going to do like so i'm just trying to put some pressure so i will have a nice print although it's not that important here we go and if i can also decide that if something is already busy like this one and i don't want to add anything i can also go that way it, it's really up to you but i think just to keep with um the theme of all this i'm just going to put a hint of this butterfly here wait a minute something like that okay so once again an assembly line just stamping on each one okay so you get what i'm doing again now for a uh, and of course you just so you can see 
I can go and decide that I want stickers on each one. I can whatever the stickers are depends of what you have. I can decide that I want a to put some tags if that's what interests me. A tag for each greeting card. So very endless options. I can decide to decorate here with uh, all kinds of ribbons, uh, bows, um, buttons. Again, endless options. I'm uh, the, the envelope. I'm keeping plain. I, th as I said, I thought about going around again with the same inking, but I, I don't know why this time. Most of the time I do it. This time I decided that I'm just going to leave it as is. I'm also thinking of um, not doing the mix and match. I'll leave it to my friend to decide what goes with what. I just flipped five envelopes to this side because of the Velcro dots. So now it's almost even. I'm just going to continue stamping the butterfly. And then I'm going to pack it all. There we go. I'm trying not to make a mess. It doesn't always <laughs> go my way. I think I'll just remove it from the acetate and put it on an acrylic block like I should have done in the first place. Let's see. Next, almost done. That's it. Here we go. All my greeting cards, all my envelopes like this. I'm taking jute and I'm going to go around just so it would be nice. You don't have to. If it's for your use, then of course you don't have to. I just want to package it nicely. Go. It, I love it's like sending a happy mail I love the finishing touches how to let's see 
how you pack everything and also decorate. Let's see. I can't see anything like this. Stickers, stickers, stickers. I think I'll just go with this like so. I'm not uh, gluing it uh, all, uh, already. I still I need to take a picture for the thumbnail <laughs> of the video. But when I'm finished, that's what it's going to look like. So this is it. I hope you liked it. Thank you for watching and let. Thank you for leaving me comments down below. I'll be seeing you in my next video. Bye for now.